Hello everyone and welcome to the Cafe Rongen Journal Watch. Again this time we are going to focus on COVID-19 and radiology and we are going to discuss this often asked question who needs to wear masks, which masks to wear and when do we quarantine someone in the radiology department. Uh, we must realize before we start this discussion that there is an ideal scenario where PPE is available for everyone and there is a practical scenario which unfortunately is very different both in India and rest of the world where there is limited availability of PPE and N95 masks. Uh, the first thing to understand is how does coronavirus spread. So when a person infected with coronavirus coughs, the coronavirus are actually present in the large and small infectious droplets which will fall within 3 to 5 feet of the person's cough, either on surfaces or on the floor. Luckily for us, coronavirus is not present in the infectious droplet nuclei which can stay suspended in the air for a longer time. Droplet nuclei is an example of spread of say TB or measles. So what is clear from this is that as long as we maintain a 6 feet or a 2 meter distance from a person with a coronavirus infection, we should be safe and that is what all guidelines say. If you are greater than 6 feet away, you technically do not need to wear any mask. Just hand hygiene is all you need to follow properly. Uh, we also need to understand what is the difference between a surgical mask and an N95 respirator. Firstly, a properly worn surgical mask has to cover the nose and the chin and ideally the person should not have a lot of facial hair so that it gives a proper fit. Uh, the N95 respirator actually comes in different sizes and you ideally need to undergo a fit test to know which is your size and you need to wear that sized N95 respirator. It has to be worn again from the nose covering the chin and this provides great protection. So when it comes to droplet infections and as we just discussed COVID-19 is a droplet infection, both surgical masks and N95 respirators are equally safe. It's only when it comes to aerosols when there are procedures which create a lot of coughing a lot of uh, res response from the patient like bronchoscopy, intubation, CPR, then these aerosols can go directly into the person's face and that is where an N95 respirator is supposed to be better than a surgical mask. Uh, but when we say better, there's not a huge difference. An N95 respirator is the gold standard. Uh, when it comes to influenza virus, for example, a properly worn N95 respirator blocks 99.6% of all the viruses. On the other hand, a surgical mask is still pretty good. It blocks almost 95% of the viruses. So it's just slightly less uh, uh, efficacious compared to an N95 mask. Now an influenza virus is actually a smaller virus than the COVID-19 virus. So we would assume that this data holds true for COVID-19 as well. Uh, when we come to actual clinical data, really, we don't have a lot of proof that N95 protects you better than surgical masks. So for example, this meta-analysis in 2016 showed that there is insufficient data to determine whether N95 is superior to surgical mask in protecting healthcare workers from respiratory infections. And this recently published randomized trial uh, actually showed no significant difference in the incidence of laboratory confirmed influenza in, patient, uh, in healthcare workers wearing N95 masks versus medical masks or surgical masks. Thus, what we should understand is while N95 is obviously the gold standard for aerosols and only for aerosols not for droplet infections uh, a surgical mask is also pretty good and pretty safe so the difference is not substantial so what are the guidelines when it comes to covid-19 given by the government of india now as per the government of india when it comes to patients in isolation rooms uh, n95 mask and glove is what is needed uh, we assume there is no aerosol generating activity going on in these rooms like as we said bronchoscopy or intubation in the ICU or critical care, of course, it's a high risk zone and a full complement of PPE, which includes N95 mask, gloves, gown and eye protection. So all of this is needed. And obviously the critical care uh, physicians and the nurses, etc. need to wear these PPEs. Um, what about other non-COVID treatment areas? Um, as per the government guidelines, PPE can be used based on hospital infection control practices. Uh, we know that till COVID-19 came, we really did not ever wear masks in such areas. Um, of course, now we may, might need to change these uh, scenarios. What about the ED? The government says that for ED cases, at least N95 mask and gloves. And if it's a severely ill patient of respiratory illness, then full complement of PPE. And of course, this makes complete sense. 
uh, what about opds and this is where i think government has gone a little overboard particularly given the shortage of n95 masks that is already happening but anyway this is the guideline for triage areas screening areas temperature recording stations holding areas and doctors chambers and n95 mask and gloves what should be worn again in all these areas the patient might be present and none of this actually applies to a radiology reporting room so radiologists usually do not need to wear an n95 mask mask and uh, perhaps not even a surgical mask is something we really need as long as we don't come within 6 feet of the patient so who are the persons who are really at risk those performing ultrasounds technicians doing x-rays and cts and although it's not in the list obviously the interventional radiology guys who will have to treat the patients so what does cdc actually say for all these uh, protective uh, guidelines and here it's a little more granular um the most important to understand is that the uh, patient needs to be masked for the entire encounter so the guidelines vary depending on whether the patient is wearing the mask or the patient is unmasked again symptomatic patients is what the guidelines are for we all have talked a lot about asymptomatic carriers but as far as cdc is concerned as far as real world data is concerned um we still are not sure about how much infection is transmitted by these asymptomatic carriers for example hong kong and singapore although they do not have lockdowns they just have social distancing and schools etc are open uh do not face a real uh, epidemic per se in terms of the number of infections and clearly if asymptomatic carriers played a big role then we should have seen many more cases in such places so um what does the cdc say as long as the healthcare provider remains at greater than 6 feet from symptomatic patients no face mask and no n95 is required if we come within 3 to 6 feet of symptomatic patients we need to wear a face mask and if we come within 3 feet of symptomatic patients this is where if the patient is masked for the entire encounter then a face mask suffices if the patient is unmasked then an n95 respirator is needed and uh, finally if it's an aerosol generating procedure then obviously an n95 mask should be used and again this is only for the aerosol generating procedures which usually won't happen beyond icus and emergency departments um one more thing to remember is that a patient who's already intubated it's a closed system so uh, viruses will not come out of the system and we don't have to worry about aerosols in intubated patients unless suctioning is going on now a lot of people talk about cloth masks are they helpful well they really don't offer great protection but perhaps they are better than nothing so as far as uh, technical standards are concerned cloth masks do not prevent viruses from entering uh but perhaps they're good for at least the patients to wear because they will certainly prevent uh, a coughing patient to let the droplets go beyond so more than preventing uh, protecting ourselves from infections it is going to protect others if someone is coughing and uh, finally i think it does decrease touching of hands to face so it might help there but really uh, if someone is going to the icu a cloth mask is not the way to go um finally we come to when do we quarantine someone and again here uh, it's important to see that the guidelines need to be more granular so it's a, this is a good article to read by atul gavande who talks about what singapore and hong kong did uh, in this situation so in hong kong the guideline says if there is more than 15 minutes of contact which is less than fix 6 feet away without the healthcare provider or exposed person wearing a surgical mask that is when you need to quarantine someone again in singapore it's 30 minutes of contact with a some with a patient less than 6 feet away without using a surgical mask uh, if the contact is less than 15 to 30 minutes then a person can continue working after wearing a mask ensuring that he or she wears a mask throughout the day and temperature has to be monitored twice daily and for brief incidental contact just self monitoring of symptoms is what is required so what these guidelines clearly show and especially seeing the success of hong kong singapore is that n9 is uh, covid-19 is not something which is going to spread immediately as long as you maintain your hand hygiene and cough etiquettes a short interval contact with a known covid-19 patient is unlikely to cause transmission of infection um this is the cdc guideline it's extremely detailed we won't go into it but again uh, ex- you know home quarantining is something which is recommended only for prolonged close contact with a covid-19 patient not for a brief contact 
so we need to take a rational decision on quarantining to avoid getting understaffed so um, you know if if we wear a surgical mask and a uh, gloves and a covid 19 patient for example and it's a brief encounter like a brief uh, x ray or a brief uh, ct encounter then perhaps we are safe and we don't need to quarantine ourselves just take a good tap on our temperature um finally we need to realize the gravity of the situation so this is an icmr projection published by icmr uh, delhi alone depending on whether it's the best case scenario will get up to 2 lakh infections or the worst case scenario where we get up to 1 crore cases so clearly that we are going to be overburdened with cases pp is already in short supply and i already know of friends in mumbai who do not have pp and are still working in icus so use of masks and quarantining has to be a very delicate balance and uh, it depends on each one of us to and of course the situation we work in to decide on uh, what this balance is going to be so overall i would say that the most important thing is that patient should wear mask every symptomatic patient with fever or cough should certainly get a surgical mask uh, the doctor should be at least 6 feet away from the patients and that is something most of us diagnostic radiologists should possibly be able to achieve and in such cases it's actually safe to even not wear a mask at all or at least safe with a cloth or surgical mask depending on availability um we should try to use eye protection so avoid contact lenses use spectacles and there are a lot of online youtube videos about how to use transparent plastic sheets to make some sort of eye protective gear um now there's an optimal scenario where everyone in the hospital will get full pp um but you know that ideal scenario is unlikely to happen so here is what i would say based on what i have read it's a if it's a routine ultrasound so most uh, hospital guidelines now state that you should ideally segregate ultrasounds into a routine and a fever sort of uh, ultrasound so for a routine ultrasound at least an n95 or a surgical mask with gloves and pp if it is available uh, if there is limited availability of pp then a surgical mask with gloves should be uh, safe i would say um, for a ct or a portable ultrasound or a portable x ray again in the ideal scenario pp is uh, is what we should use um, or an n95 or surgical mask with gloves if available if pp is in shortage then an n95 with surgical or surgical mask with gloves should be fine and for uh, emergency or fever opd so you know many hospitals now have separate fever or section for such patients and again for these i think uh, it's safer to try to get the pp if not available again try to at least get n95 with gloves or a surgical mask if that is not available so even if there's limited pp i would say try to get an n95 mask with gloves here but if not possible then again surgical mask as we just discussed is not uh, inferior to n95 based on any studies so it should be safe to use that as well so of course the disclaimer is this is my personal inference and uh, we hope that radiology specific pp guidelines come from society soon um other disclaimer of course is that things are evolving rapidly you have to keep yourselves updated and that uh, you should individualize this based on institutional protocol and on specific case scenarios um stay calm stay safe i hope i have helped in clarifying some of the doubts i uh, look forward to another cafe rongan video soon